Welcome to the IREL Podcast. Are you sick and tired of real estate gurus pitching their next free construction deal only to find out years later they were completely wrong? Worried the next overseas conference you spend thousands to attend will only be used to sell overpriced lots and deserted developments? Join thousands of other international real estate seekers who are looking for their place in paradise without the sales pitch. Straight from your host, Taylor White. If you're a homeowner or property manager and want to put your vacation rental in front of over 62 million travelers each month and earn incredible returns of up to $56,000 per year, then you must list it on the number one vacation rental marketplace. Head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash rental to get started. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 26 of the IREL podcast. I'm your host, Taylor White. I am very excited to head back to the DR when I sit down and speak with Arthur Bird from Remax Coral Bay in Sosua, Dominican Republic. And as always, we'll get the true story on the Sosua real estate scene and have you coming away wanting to investigate its local property market further or cross off your shortlist entirely and continue listening right now from arthur you will learn why he and his wife sally don't miss the cold new jersey winters and instead enjoy them in between the dominican towns of sosua and cabarete provides us with his up to the minute on the ground sosua insights from the perspective of seeing the bubble the pop and gives his take on where it stands today sets the record straight on why you shouldn't buy to flip right now and instead provides a more sensible three to five year option that kicks off monthly cash flow pulls back the curtain on how his clients are buying their vacation homes today and if getting bank or seller financing is even a viable option and much more and don't forget if you are listening to this podcast and want to grab Arthur's contact details, links on buying or selling Sosua real estate, or any other show notes, head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash 26. Pass me my Brugal and Coke, lighten me up another hand-rolled Dominican cigar, and let's head back to this special Caribbean gem. In case you can't tell, I'm excited. Let's get Arthur on the phone. Arthur, what's going on, buddy? It's Taylor White. I'm excited to have you on the podcast today, straight from Sosua, Dominican Republic, so we can get to know you personally. Tell us more about yourself and where your stopping grounds were before you ended up in Sosua. Hey, great, Taylor. Nice to talk to you today. Well, Sally and I moved down from New Jersey, where I ran a consulting business for years and years, but it was just too cold there, so we moved south. Arthur, I have to ask, you're in Sosua, you're from New Jersey, what's the weather like today? The weather today is just like it is every day, mid-80s, partly cloudy, chance of rain. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, I am jealous. And so we can get a better idea of you professionally. Give us your brief resume leading up to Remax Coral Bay. Well, I was raised in Mississippi where I ran my dad's business for a number of years. While I was going to college, I took a master's degree, taught high school and college English for six years in Mississippi and Oklahoma, and was recruited, actually, by one of my former students' mother into AT&T uh, out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they moved me to New Jersey, where I worked on the Dun & Bradstreet uh, account for uh, national accounts for AT&T for a number of years, then started my own consulting business ultimately sold that a couple of times, became COO and CEO of a couple of other companies, and finally just couldn't take the rat race anymore and ended up down in the DR. Hey, Arthur, I'm curious. Since you have your master's degree in English, how is it for you in the DR speaking Spanish? Well, my Spanish is pretty rough, but everything is done down here in U.S. dollars and in American English, so it's fairly easy to navigate here. The only time I really have to speak Spanish is when we're talking to security guards or maids or gardeners, things like that. All the business transactions are done in English. That's fantastic. And Arthur, we are always fascinated to learn about which countries people have considered and why. Now, why don't we delve deeper into the DR as a whole and then why you chose Sosua in particular versus other popular spots in the DR? Sure, sounds good. Well, we looked everywhere. 
I, I have a son who speaks Portuguese and Spanish, and he's lived all over the world. So we kind of followed him around to Costa Rica and different places. We went to St. Martin in Jamaica, all the places most Americans go to. And we just never could find what we were looking for because it was too expensive or too overdeveloped. And then we happened to trip into the Dominican Republic, which is a short three-hour flight from our home in New Jersey. And we just fell in love with the Sasua Cabarete area. So, Arthur, I have a question. If we're looking at a map of the DR, can you better explain where Sosua is located? Sure. Sosua is on the north coast, and the north coast is the lesser known portion of the country because out east in Punta Cana, which everyone knows, is all the big all-inclusive hotels that own all the beachfront. Here on the north coast, we have mountains that come right down to the water, and it's where people come for residency. So we have, a, we have tourism here for sure, but this is a part-time residency area where people come to spend the winters and enjoy themselves in the beautiful water and the great breezes that come in off the Atlantic Ocean. So I'm curious, if people are flying into the DR, how do they come out to you in Sosua? Well, the airport is 15 minutes from where I'm sitting. So most people, when they get off of the plane at Puerto Plata, within 20 minutes are either at their villa or at their condo on the beach. So it's not too tough a trip. <laughs> so you actually fly into Puerto Plata. You don't have to fly into Santo Domingo. We have an international airport here, and there are flights from all over Europe, England, Germany, Sweden, different places, and several destinations in the U.S. as well. Well, Arthur, we have gotten to know you both personally and professionally, reasons why you chose the DR and why Sosua speaks to you. But get ready, because now it's time for us to pick your brain on the local real estate scene and to get the juices flowing. We're going to do a quick round of what I like to call the real estate hot seat. We're we'll asking you five rapid fire questions, and you give me an answer in 15 seconds or less each. Arthur, are you ready for the Sosua hot seat? I'm feeling the heat. <laughs> <laughs> what currency is real estate priced in? Uh, things are priced in U.S. dollars here. Obviously, pesos are the things that most people use on the local scene, but real estate transacts in U.S. dollars. Is owning property as a foreigner legal? It's actually quite simple. About 15 years ago, the government passed a series of laws that makes it completely legal for any foreigner with a valid passport to own property here, and you do not need to be a resident or a citizen. Can property be titled? Oh, absolutely. Uh, titles are issued. There's none of this 99-year lease stuff. Titles are issued. And as a matter of fact, about four or five years ago, a new Deslinda law was, was issued, and it really clarified all the titles. All titles now are GPS surveyed, so they're absolutely crisply clear. Can money flow in and out of the DR easily, or are there currency restrictions? Well, there are no currency restrictions, but worldwide, governments and banks are more on guard against money laundering and things like that than they've ever been. So uh, you have to have a legitimate transaction for money to flow in or out of the country. But uh, the attorneys here are all familiar with that. Most of the attorneys have their own clearing banks in the U.S. So when someone's ready to buy real estate here, it wires right to their attorney in this country, and it's a simple transaction. And as listeners know, Arthur, my number one question, what is your favorite local drink? Ah, that's not so tough. The Cuba Libre. <laughs> the Cuba Libre is a rum and coke, and it, the country thrives on it. Arthur, I have to ask you, what brand of rum do you go with in the DR? Well, Barcelo is, a, is my favorite brand, but Brugal is one of the largest brands of rum in the Caribbean islands. It is a Dominican company owned by Dominicans, and I've had a couple of shots of that, too. <laughs> Arthur, I have to ask you, do you mind speaking about your personal situation as far as what you think the day-to-day -day cost of living is like in the DR now as compared to when you're back in the States? Oh, there's just no comparison. Living in the DR is considerably less expensive because the tax scenario here is minimal. And most of the properties that people buy don't even qualify for property tax. So once you pay the transfer tax to buy a property, it's fair, there's really not much after that. And in terms of day-to-day -day living expenses, all you really have is your entertainment, food, and maybe a car. Because there's really not the great shopping and Nordstrom's and, and things like that. So people spend their money here on athletic sports and entertainment. 
And I'm curious, do you have all the things that you need in Sosua or do you guys go to Puerto Plata? We go to Puerto Plata occasionally, and when we first came here 10 years ago, we had to go to Puerto Plata much more frequently. But now, between Sisua and Cabaretti, these towns are only about four or five miles apart and are gradually becoming one metropolitan area. Between Sisua and Cabaretti, we can find pretty much everything we need. Okay, Arthur, you can now relax, but just a little bit, as you are off the Sosua hot seat. But it's time to zero in on the local real estate scene. Give us your brief synopsis on the Sosua real estate market over the last few years, where it is today, and then where you see it heading for the next few years. I think this is a great market because it's largely undiscovered by Americans. Canadians and Europeans have been coming here and buying here for years. Now Americans are starting to realize that Punta Cana is not the only destination in the DR. And so this has been a steady growth market here. It, forever it was an all-cash market. It's now slowly becoming a financing market where most sellers will finance that. So it's not a place where people come to buy a property and flip it in six months. But if you're willing to hold a property for a few years and enjoy a rental income and really enjoy the expat community here, it's a great place to live. Hey, Arthur, I'm curious. You've mentioned Sosua as well as Cabarete. Can you explain if you think these are small towns or if they're large towns or the approximate population? I'm not exactly sure what the population is, but I'm going to guesstimate that there are about 15,000 uh, people each. And they're different towns, even though they're very close together. Sosua is a real working town. There are banks and lawyers and architects and hardware stores and all those kinds of things. And, and Cabaretti has some of that too, but Cabaretti tends to be more tourism focused with uh, residency as a secondary matter, and Sosua is exactly the opposite. So we look at these is two poles that offer everything you could possibly want in terms of choice of restaurant and the kinds of amenities that you'll need to live here. And then if you need to drive back to Santo Domingo, let's say, about how far is that drive time from where you guys are located and is there a good highway to do so? Uh, the drive time to Santo Domingo is about three, three and a half hours and there are three different ways you can go. You can go over the mountain, which is a spectacular drive. I'm sure that's beautiful. Oh, it's just unbelievable, the vistas there. Or you can go east down towards Samana and cut across the new international highway, or you can take the longer way through Santiago. So all three of those drives have their own unique value, and none of them are that difficult. And by the way, we have the greatest bus system here. You can hop on a bus right here in Sosua and go to uh, Santo Domingo on an air conditioned ride for nine dollars. Well, Arthur, this sounds fantastic. And you have us sold on the DR as a country, so Sua as a location, and then it's really the outlook within the near future. Of course, you don't have a crystal ball. I sure as heck don't. No one does. But that is why I think it's so vitally important to get on the ground insight from local real estate professionals. And yes, Arthur, I just used the words local and on the ground in the same sentence to drive home a very important fact. You are not some newsletter writer who might spend a few days in Sosua and then send out emails with hot buys calling yourself an international real estate guru. You are there in the trenches on a daily basis, dealing with local buyers, sellers, agents, lawyers, and every facet of the real estate business. Arthur, break this down even further for us. Pretend you are Google Maps or Google Street View. What streets, neighborhoods, or parts of the town are we talking about in Sosua? Well, this is one of the most fascinating parts of this area, is because the, the difference in Cabaretti and Sosua is not just a more of a working town or less of a working town. They're different frontages. The frontage in Sosua tends to be more cliff-oriented with two magnificent beaches right in town, whereas the frontage in Cabarete tends to be a two-mile-long, gorgeous, sandy beach. So they're different in that respect, and some of the most pristine areas to live are in between those two areas. I live halfway between Cabarete and Sosua on one of the most gorgeous, semi-private beaches you've ever seen. Each of these has their own benefit to it of being in town or being a little bit more in the country. So you can find what you want here. So, Arthur, I'm curious. You're stuck in the middle of both of these fantastic locations. Give me an example of why you might go to Sosua, and then give me an example of why you might go to Cabarete. Well, one of the main things that we do is we choose restaurants. When you go to Sosua, there's
there's a great German population here that was left over after World War II when much land was passed out to the German Jews as reparation for the, uh, for the war. And there are some terrific German restaurants and seafood restaurants. And then when you go to, to Cabarete, there are some of the most magnificent seafood restaurants I've ever eaten at. One, our favorite, is a, a French restaurant. The old guy ran it for years. His name was Pappy, and they probably had the best <laughs> shrimp you've ever tasted. Hey, Arthur, I'm curious, as I know that there's a big international draw to the DR, can you better explain what the local DR food is like? The local DR food tends to be relatively plain. It, they love beans and rice and chicken of every flavor. We have great pork here because of, of the German population. So the local fare for Dominican food is very straightforward, but there is an ambience of French food and Italian food and German food and, and Swiss food. All kinds of different restaurants are here because we have a fantastic expat population that's roughly a third American, a third Canadian, and a third European. So there's something here for everyone. Everyone. Well, Arthur, now that we have specific locations in mind, what types of properties do you recommend? And first, why don't I give you a few brief examples of what I'm talking about? Are we talking about buying pre-construction units for capital appreciation that we later flip? Are we talking about buying completed apartments, houses, or office spaces to generate rental income? Or are we talking about buying land to either sell as is or subdivide into smaller tracts? Arthur, give us a better idea of what you are talking about today. Generally speaking, the beachfront and the cliff front in Sasua and Cabarete tends to be condominiums. And those condominiums are some brand new, some in a pre-construction phase, and some that have been here for a number of years. So there's a price point there for different people, different amenities, and different sizes. You go back about a half a mile into the hills overlooking the oceans are where the villas tend to be. And so most people come down here as a part-time residency, and many people, when they're not here, rent these properties out. So long-term equity growth that supplements with uh, rental uh, revenue is very common here, though a lot of people own properties here and they never rent them out. So this tends to be residency oriented as a, with a supplement of rental income. And then Arthur, before we transition on, I just want to be crystal clear. If we're looking at real estate in the DR, it's priced for the most part either in U.S. dollars or euros. And for the most part for expats, it's not priced in the local peso. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Now, when you sign your contracts with your lawyer, things will be written in Spanish. They will be translated into Dominican pesos. And so the legal contracts are always written in Spanish and handled with their currency. But for the purposes of shopping, buying, listing properties, they're always done in U.S. dollars. Oh, perfect. Thanks for the clarification. Okay, Arthur. Now, I'm going to hit you up with a two-part question that I know everyone wants to know, and you have to give us a general range so we have some price points in mind. Here they are. Part one, what would be the price range of what we are talking about? Maybe give us a starting price point at the low end to a final price point at the high end. And Arthur, just to clarify, I'm talking about total purchase price. Sure. I would say that depending on one, two, three, four bedroom, what you're looking for. Generally speaking, around $100,000, you can buy a really nice condo all the way up to over $2 million. In Cabarete, there's some $2 million condos right on the beach that are magnificent. But the typical buy around here is in the two hundred dollars to $350,000 range. And that's true of both houses and condos. Many condos here go for uh, under $250,000 right on the beachfront with fantastic views. So, Arthur, I know this is going to be a tough transition to part two, but I'm going to ask it anyways. What would be the approximate cost per meter as an average range? Yeah, and that really depends on how new it is because the cost of construction, of course, goes up over time. But generally speaking, about $1,000 a meter is a, is a normal price range. Brand new, high-end, ultra-luxury condos go up to about $1,800 a meter. And then for listeners like me who are used to dealing in square feet, divide the numbers you hear by 10.76 or maybe just a flat 10 to keep it easy, and you get close enough numbers to get an idea of what Arthur is referring to. 
Okay, Arthur, this is a question I like to call, what would sister do? My 40-something-year-old sister calls you up, says she has X amount of dollars to spend. You know, you can't let my sister down. Share with us three specific examples you would show her and explain why these make sense. There are a zillion choices depending on whether she wants to be in town or out of town, but I've got several that come right to mind. One is a two-bedroom. I love this one condo. It has the most magnificent view in the whole complex. It's been completely renovated by a French-Canadian lady with beautiful taste, and it is something special. That's $219,000. There are also houses here. You can build a brand new villa here for $180,000 up. $180,000 will buy you a brand new two-bedroom villa with a pool, landscaping, ready to go. So those are two options that really make a lot of sense. And there's some resale houses in the one hundred and eighty to three hundred thousand dollar range that are absolutely stunning. So Arthur, I'm curious, what is the clientele that you normally deal with on a daily basis in your real estate business? What we've seen over the year our past eight years of doing this is that in the beginning they were all European and mostly uh uh, Canadians. Today, we're seeing an increasingly strong American market as more and more Americans retire. And by the way, there was an article recently in U.S. News and World Report that said that Cabaretti was one of the five best destinations to retire in the world. So a lot of Americans are now taking their money. They don't, don't, they're sick and tired of paying taxes in the U.S. And they come down here and instead of paying tons of taxes, they use that money to go to great restaurants and enjoy some of the athletes. Here. So, Arthur, I'm curious again. You came down about eight years ago, you say, which is something around 2005, 2006. And for most locations, that was kind of the prime of the real estate bubble. How, how have things fared since then in the eight years since you've been there? Well, the first three years, we saw a pretty strong growth in the market here. So it was very aggressive and strong for a few years. And I, I like to tell people that I think this market trails the American market by about 18 months. So when things are bad in the U.S., it takes about 18 months to show up here. And when things are great in the U.S., it takes about 18 months to pull through here. So the first three or four years were really strong. Then it leveled out. And now what we're seeing is strength in the market returning. The competition we really have today is the stock market in the U.S. But as more more and more people find that the stock market has really rallied 30 or 40 percent. They're starting to want to take some of that money out of the market and put it into hard assets. And we're seeing another growth spurt here. Well, Arthur, we are laser focused on specific areas of Sosua. We know our starting price point. We have an idea of cost per meter. We have three specific examples, which are good enough even for my sister. Now, I have to ask an obvious question. How do we buy? Do we need to come in with all cash, whether that's from our checking account, home equity line of credit, or retirement funds? Or can we come in with a certain percentage down and get local financing from a bank or credit union? Uh, that's an excellent question. A mortgage financing has not been something traditional in this market. It was a cash market forever. Now, however, we're starting to see that grow, particularly through owner financing. So to purchase something here, a person comes down, spends a few days with Sally and me. We show them the market. We try to target the right area for them, pick out the right property. And once an offer to purchase has been negotiated between the seller and the buyer, a 10% commitment will bind that property. It commits the seller, it commits the buyer, and usually people go back to their home country, wire that 10% to the lawyer that we've introduced them to here in the DR, and that holds the deal until all the proper, the title work can be done and the transfer. At the time of transfer, either the other 90% is paid or whatever financing has been put in place goes into effect at, the, at that time. So it's a very straightforward process. We stand beside you the whole way, and we found that it's very efficient here. Arthur, I'm curious as a follow-up. Let's pretend that you're doing with a client from the States or Canada, and they're going to be paying cash. I'm sure on personal conversations, you kind of know where that cash is coming from. Is that sitting in their checking account? Are they doing a self-directed IRA? Are they doing a home equity line of credit on their home in the States or Canada and then bringing that to the DR? How are they paying for their purchase? That's a good question. Many people obviously liquidate assets in the U.S. 
U.S. and or Canada and send that that money down. But what we've seen over the years is one of the most popular financing vehicles is a home equity line of credit. So people take out a, a line of credit on their home back in North America and they use that cash to come down here and make a cash purchase. The advantage of that is it puts them in a stronger negotiating position if they're not trying to negotiate financing with a seller at the same time that they're trying to negotiate price. And then most of the clients that you deal with, do they live in the DR a few months out of the year? Um, is it six months out of the year? Is it 12 months? And then if they're not living in it full time, what do they do with the property when they aren't there? Sure. Uh, I know people that haven't left the island in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> but most people come down and tend to spend the winter. The six and six is considered to be the ideal scenario. But we see every variety of that imaginable. Many people, when they leave, they just lock the door to their condo or their villa and have the property management that they have employed take care of it. But about a third of those people, I would say, probably turn that into some sort of rental. Down here, if you pay cash for your property and you're not trying to carry a mortgage, it's fairly easy to meet your yearly expenses with just a little bit of rental as the year goes by. And then, Arthur, I know that you're not a lawyer, but what do people mostly do as far as a visa? Do they stay on a tourist visa? Do they get a, a business like investor visa? What do they do as far as a visa is concerned? Yeah, you really don't even need a visa to, to visit this country if you're coming from North America. You just come in, and if you stay longer than 30 days, there's a tiny penalty that you have to pay. 20 to $50, depending on how long you stay. So the longer you stay, there's more of a penalty. People that know they're, they're going to be here for extended periods of time can go for a residency. A residency costs about $1,200. Uh, takes about four months to process. And then you can come and go at will with no penalty. And then, Arthur, anyone who has ever owned real estate can tell you, you need to have a money exit strategy in place even before you buy. It's something what I like to call, where's the cheddar? You are buying the property to do what with it to make some money. So, Arthur, where's my cheddar? Uh, this market, as I've said many times, is a residency market. So a buy and hold strategy is what works here. If you buy a good property, you hold it for five years, then you're in a position to turn it over. Buying and selling the year after is not a really great idea here because by the time you pay lawyers and real estate agents and all the other uh, uh, associated costs there, that's really not a good strategy. So we tell clients, be prudent. Have a long-term view. If you're looking at five years, then this market is really good for you. If you're looking at less than that, then you're taking on more risk, and it's something you may or may not choose to do. So, Arthur, if the client lives in the DR for six months, outside the DR for the other six months, and they're going to rent it out for, let's say, six months, what's the best strategy for them to use? Well, this is a seasonal market, so our high season is from January through the end of April, and then we have another mini high June through August when quite a few Europeans come in the summertime. So those months, the, the, any rental is going to be pretty strong. The other months of the year, it tends to be slower, and, and especially in terms of short-term rental. The long-term rentals are very common here, and they can be picked up at any time of the year. There are quite a number of people down here that live on the beach, do freelance writing, day trading in the markets, those kinds of things where they make their living on the internet, and they can come any time of the year. They're not just trying to avoid winter snow. They're going to the beach because they love the beach, and maybe they like to kiteboard. Well, Arthur, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to share with us about Sosua Real Estate. We have heard about your journey, why you chose the DR, exact areas of Sosua to focus on, price points to look out for, specific examples good enough even for my sister, a money strategy to purchase, and then what we might do with it after the fact to make some cheddar. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. But before we do, share with us easy ways to get a hold of you, any parting advice you might want to share, and then let's say goodbye. Sure. It's been my pleasure, by the way, Taylor. I really appreciate this. And, and I hope this gets the word out about one of the great destinations in the Caribbean that's been largely unknown until now. And we like to see that. I can always be contacted through Remax Coral Bay. My email address is arthur.bird at yahoo.com. That's bird spelled B-Y-R-D. And, uh, 
if you will send me an email, I'll happily send you information with all my contact information, including cell phone, which is 809-697-9055. Absolutely fantastic, Arthur. I have really enjoyed this conversation straight from Sosua in the DR to our earbuds, and I hope we can catch up again in three to six months. Anytime, Taylor. Come down and try one of these Cuba Libres with me. I want to thank Arthur once again for taking us back to the DR and breaking down why the beachside Caribbean town of Sosua is such an attractive location. I love nothing more than speaking with knowledgeable and professional insiders just like Arthur, and I can't wait to get him back on the show again soon with more specific Sosua real estate investments he believes you need to hear about right now. If you're listening to this podcast and want to grab Arthur's contact details, links on buying or selling Sosua Real Estate, or any other show notes, head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash 26. Are you a real estate agent like Arthur with an amazing story you want to share? Do you have properties located in the world's most desired hotspots just waiting for buyers? Well, guess what? I want to help. Whether you are an Englishman in Australia, a Spaniard in Argentina, a German in Paraguay, or an American in the DR like Arthur, I invite you to share it with my eager audience. Head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash 26 to get started. And together, we will share your story. You have been listening to the IREL Podcast with Taylor White. Be sure to hit up IRELpodcast.com for more. That's IRELpodcast.com. Thanks for listening.